If you want to become an entrepreneur, where do you start? Is there a resource you can use? Well, starting the business is actually the easy part. Just register as a tax-paying entity with the state in which you operate. And yes, now that I've been doing this for a while, I'm going to suggest that you incorporate in the state in which you live. The reason is, as you begin to grow, opportunities will arise where it helps to be registered locally. For example, anybody who makes a purchase on behalf of the government must first look within their own city and then to the state to purchase goods and services. There are more than a few startup resources out there. A lot of it will depend on what you want to do. For example, if you decide to take on venture capital, the guidelines, resources, and the approach will be drastically different than someone who may want to start a food truck business and ultimately a restaurant. I have never used a formal startup resource per se. When I got started in the late 90s, they weren't as prevalent as they are now. And even being an entrepreneur wasn't nearly as fashionable as it is now. Previously, business plans were recommended when starting out, but they are not so important these days. They are still helpful because they can create a clear picture of the needs or maybe deficiencies of the business that might have originally been overlooked. But the industry is trending more towards things like pitch decks, which are abbreviated versions of business plans, maybe a presentation of, say, 10 to 15 slides. And you will need one should you decide to seek venture funding. Again, later, we will scratch the surface of venture capital. Here's the thing. Statistically, only a few businesses will be successful anyway, which means the best of plans can still fail, especially the first time around. So the reality is some entrepreneurs might be able to, as I have proven, literally just start the business and learn on the go. This strategy has many advantages because if you inundate yourself with too much research trying to figure out the best way to start a business, you know, Will that create delays in getting to the money? Because even with a carefully crafted business plan or pitch deck, you're still not safe. Now, don't be afraid to embrace entrepreneurship for fear of failure. In fact, don't look at it as failure. Instead, it's really just part of the growth process. And what you will find is that valuable lessons can be learned when you experience setbacks which will ultimately make you a better entrepreneur. By the way, almost every entrepreneur will experience some level of business failure. Almost every large company has, let's just say, more than a few endeavors that ended up in the graveyard, especially within the tech space. Now, for those who are associated with a college, there are several resources for entrepreneurs including free workshops and opportunities to connect with like-minded individuals. There are also mentorship opportunities where you can conduct either in-person or virtual meetings with someone who has industry experience. It might be a good idea to leverage the entrepreneurship programs offered for free at most institutions. And everything I mentioned will probably be available in pretty much any community which means you don't actually have to be connected to a college to find this level of support and resources for entrepreneurs. Now let's discuss what you should sell. There are a lot of things you can sell as an entrepreneur. There is even a way to make money without actively selling or even working for a company. I will explain shortly, but generally there are two main categories in which you can make money products and services. So products can be tangible goods like books, food, or detergent, things you can touch. But there are also intangible products like anything digital, computer software, websites, or maybe mobile apps. With regard to services, an example would be a cleaning service or a tax preparation service. Now, as previously discussed, you can sell just about anything as long as there's a demand for it. Conventional wisdom says that you should be selling a product or service that solves a problem. Okay, and 
You won't find me disagreeing with this concept. However, there are numerous instances where the product being sold doesn't actually solve a problem. If someone collects baseball cards or comic books, what problem is that solving? So a better way to approach selling is to offer something people want or need. Earlier, I said that it was possible to make money without actively selling or working for a company. So how is this possible? Well, some people make money by investing in other businesses and owning a percentage, but not actually working directly within or for the business. In module two, I mentioned that the dictionary's definition of a corporation was interesting. A group of merchants or traders united in a trade guild. And where it says united, we can modify that word a bit because the participants in a trade guild may have no direct association or formal relationship. Knowing that and understanding the basic definition of a corporation, we can do some pretty cool things to make money. For example, if you own a website or social media account or even an email account, you can sell someone else's product by way of an affiliate program and earn a commission or referral fee every time a sale is generated. As an affiliate, you don't even have to stock inventory or do anything other than refer customers to specific products and or services. You don't even have to know what the product does or how to use it. Based on the definition of a corporation, we can even start a digital service business, meaning I can create an enterprise that does logo design, marketing, social media, copyright, content creation, and a myriad of other services, even with no skills or ability to do these things myself. I simply agree to work with people who provide these services and act as a middleman, a facilitator. So I'm charging the customer a hundred bucks, but all I'm going to do is go to a freelance services website and have a specialist do the work for 25, allowing me to net 75. And you can work with the same freelancers over and over to streamline the business. So as you can see, there are a lot of potential products or services you can sell. Continuing with the theme of how you can make money selling digital products or services, right now, a large portion of the money is being made by anyone who has the ability to create a digital platform where usually the money is generated either through advertising revenue or maybe collecting a percentage of sales or even charging a flat or monthly fee to utilize the platform. So if we come out of the virtual world and back into the physical, a platform is like owning commercial real estate. The landlord creates the environment for which other businesses can interact or exchange goods and services via the space in some way. So think of a flea market or shopping mall. These are platforms. They attract a lot of people for various reasons. If we go back into the virtual world, popular utilities such as Twitter, GoDaddy, and Amazon are all platforms. Now, whatever you decide to sell, your first idea may not always be a winner. It just needs to generate income. Many popular brands didn't start off as what we know them to be now. There will always be opportunities to evolve and grow. So let's talk about how to test your idea. Previously, we discussed that there has to be demand for whatever you are selling. But if you have no experience or maybe have never sold within a certain category of products or services, how do you know if it's worth pursuing? How do you know if it will sell? Because it doesn't make sense to put a lot of resources into something that doesn't sell. In this case, it is usually a good idea to test the market to ensure there is enough demand. There are a few ways we can kind of gauge the market to see if the thing you are selling has potential. Someone requested it. For example, someone said your food is good, man. You need to start a restaurant. And even better if more than one person said you need to start a restaurant. Get honest feedback from people you already know. Just ask your friends or family, hey, what do you think of this? Or which one of these do you prefer? Or how much would you be willing to pay for something like this? 
Similarly, you can offer free or discounted samples and get feedback. Then try to improve based on any feedback received. You can utilize your industry knowledge or expertise. If you have industry knowledge, you might already be aware of what's out there or what's missing from the marketplace that is likely to sell. List it for pre-order. Can it generate money before it is even ready to sell? Or can you get enough inquiries about the product before it's available for purchase? Offer multiple products to see which one they interact with the most. Out of six color choices, you thought the red color would have the most interest, but the customers are choosing blue the most. So you might be able to eliminate colors that have low interest and shift your focus on where you see the greatest demand. Sell first, figure out the rest later. Another way to market test an idea is to demonstrate that you can actually generate a sale, preferably from someone you don't know. The market will let you know if the thing you are selling has potential. If there are enough sales, we can deduce that there is sufficient market demand. And one final but important tip is, through all of this, be open to and expecting of criticism of your product or service. At the same time, you may have to ignore certain feedback. For example, if the market is already saturated with the thing you are selling and someone suggests that it's too competitive, it's probably best to heed but ignore this type of feedback as the market has proven time and time again that you can win even in crowded environments. So when the dude on Shark Tank is telling entrepreneurs that they're going to get squished by larger brands, you actually want to pause and acknowledge that this type of feedback might be valid, but you're going to continue as planned. The following businesses were once in last place, but eventually emerged as top players and even leaders in their respective industries. AMD, so that's Advanced Micro Devices, Apple, and of course, Google. Let's highlight the important points from Module 3. We started by asking, where should you start as an entrepreneur? This question is not so easily answered because there are different business models. But one crazy but not so crazy approach is to just start the business using your best judgment and then figure out the rest as you go. Sometimes all the planning in the world is not enough to guarantee success. There is no perfect guide for starting a business. So just start somewhere, anywhere. And if available, it might be a good idea if you can take advantage of any free entrepreneurial resources within your community. Next came the question, what should you sell? Again, we looked at a lot of options. Conventional wisdom says that you should sell something that solves a problem. Not a bad idea, but not everything being sold has to solve a problem. So it's better to sell whatever you think people will want or need. We learned that you can even make money in areas where you have zero industry experience or expertise, where you may not even know how to use the product being sold. You can make money as a facilitator or maybe an investor who provides capital in exchange for equity in a business. Finally, if you have something ready to sell, remember that you can gauge the level of interest in your product or service by performing a market test.